The BBC is interrupting its normal programmes to bring you an important announcement. This is BBC News from London. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We are all devastated by the news that we have just heard from Balmoral. The death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. And with the passing of the second Elizabethan age, we usher in a new era in the magnificent history of our great country, exactly as Her Majesty would have wished, by saying the words, God save the King. Like everyone across Scotland, the United Kingdom, indeed the world, I feel a deep sense of sadness on the death of Her Majesty the Queen. See the throne in February 1952, crowned in June 1953, the longest reigning British monarch ever. I pay tribute to my mother's memory and I honour her life of service. I know that her death brings great sadness to so many of you. And I share that sense of loss beyond measure with you all. I am sometimes asked, among all the world leaders I met, who was the most impressive? And I have no hesitation in saying <coughs> that from all the heads of state and government, the most impressive person I met was Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Your Majesty. As the Queen herself did with such unswerving devotion, I too now solemnly pledge myself throughout the remaining time God grants me to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of our nation. Your Majesty, to make your declaration. I, Charles III, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and of my other realms and territories, King, defender of the faith, do faithfully promise and swear that I shall inviolably maintain and preserve the settlement of the true Protestant religion. God save the King. God save the King. Three cheers for His Majesty the King. Hip hip. I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles, his heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. Prince Charles Philip Arthur George is now, by the death of our late sovereign, happy of memory, become our only lawful and rightful liege lord Charles III. God save the King. God save the King. Your Majesty, 
I welcome you and Her Majesty the Queen Consort to Parliament today on this solemn occasion. As I stand before you today, I cannot help but feel the weight of history which surrounds us and which reminds us of the vital parliamentary traditions to which members of both houses dedicate yourselves with such personal commitment for the betterment of us all. If I might paraphrase the words of the great Robert Burns, my dear mother was the friend of man, the friend of truth, the friend of age, and guide of youth. Few hearts like hers with virtue warmed, few heads with knowledge so informed. I need it to come. We need it to pay our respects, to mourn our queen before we want to celebrate our king. My mother saw Northern Ireland pass through momentous and historic changes. We played a great role here in terms of reconciliation and our face, so it's the end of an era for sure. Your Majesty, our prayers will be with you and your family for a long time to come. On behalf of all my family, I can only offer the most sincere and heartfelt thanks for your condolences and support. They mean more to me than I can ever possibly express. To my darling Mama, as you begin your last great journey to join my dear late Papa, I want simply to say this. Thank you. Thank you for your love and devotion to our family and to the family of nations you have served so diligently all these years. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. <laughs>